and welcome to Bitfire, your channel for everything web security related. Today I want to talk about a serious vulnerability that affects over 500,000 websites that use the WooCommerce Payment plugin. Talk about how this authentication bypass vulnerability works, how it can lead to a complete site takeover. Additionally, we'll also talk about how common authentication bypass vulnerabilities are in WordPress and how runtime application self-protection firewalls can be used to prevent these types of attacks. To demo this vulnerability, I'm going to be using the Postman service. Postman is a RESTful API explorer that developers use to create and test API endpoints. In this case, we're going to be using the WordPress RESTful API. This is included by default in every WordPress install, and we haven't enabled any extra functionality. The only thing we've done is activated the WooCommerce payment plugin. Now, by default, any of these API endpoints require authentication, and in order to create new users, requires administrative level access to execute these endpoints. What we're going to do is we're going to exploit the vulnerability, which allows us to add a user ID that this request will run as. By default, every WordPress website has a default user with a user ID of one, which is an administrator account. So in this case, I've changed the name of the vulnerable parameter, which is not actually a get parameter as I've shown here. It's another type of request or another type of data that is sent by user controlled information, which means that anyone using an interface like this or curl or wget, if you're familiar with those programs, or even just using a web browser can send this request. And the name of the parameter is not some condition. I've changed it to protect um, the uh, vulnerability details so that someone cannot copy and paste this video to exploit this issue. It's a different type of uh, user controlled data. And when we execute it with this value and the user ID of, uh, you know what, let's just go ahead and show you if I set it to user ID 90, which doesn't exist, we send the request, the response is you're not allowed to create new users because user ID 90 does not exist. But if I change this to user ID, which does exist, so for instance, user ID one, it will run this REST request as user ID run. Now, when I click send, the result I get back is the name of the newly created user. And if we go back to our other web browser here and we look at our users, we have a new hacked user, which is an administrator. Now I'm gonna run through the exact exploit details of how the vulnerability works with all of the parameter names and parameter types changed. We're gonna run a debugger, we'll step through the code, and then I'll show you how a RASP firewall, like Bitfire, can be used to prevent this type of exploit. Let's take a look. Now I've changed the site that we're gonna be working with to work with the local site that's running on my development system here. And when we run the request, we step directly into our code path, and I'm gonna continue because I have a breakpoint in the vulnerable code. This is not the WooCommerce vulnerable code. This is a clone, of the vulnerable section of code with all of the input types changed. So for instance, like I said earlier, it's not a get parameter and the parameter name is not some condition, but it is user controlled data. So what we're gonna do is step through this callback, which is the determine current user uh, filter that's used by WordPress to determine who's currently logged in. The WooCommerce payment system updates this filter with this code or code very similar to this, which looks at, here we're checking if our get, if our get code has the condition, which it does, and then it's going to return the int value of that condition, which is one. And now we're gonna pop up in the call stack to the WordPress code for these filters. Code's a little complicated, but what I want you to take note of is there's these callbacks, okay? There's the WordPress validate auth cookie callback, which is already run. That, that callback returned false. It was not able to determine the current user. Then we ran the WooCommerce payment plugin, which returned the value of one. 
here's our value right here, which is the user ID of the currently logged in user it's trying to figure out. Now, there's two more callbacks that need to run. Validate the logged in cookie and validate application password. These are the two default authentication methods that are included with WordPress. We're about to run those next. I want you to see what that code looks like. So as we step over and we get to the call right here, we're gonna call those functions. We're gonna go ahead and step into it. This is the WordPress validate logged in cookie, which takes as an argument, the user ID of the last filter because all these calls are chained. Because that, that uh, filter returned the user ID of one, this code's gonna see that a user's already been set and it's just gonna go ahead and leave it the same. Now we're gonna skip through. We're gonna look at the next one for the application password and has the exact same code here. Because it already has a user ID value of one, it's gonna go ahead and return that. We've run all the filters to determine the current user ID. Now we can pop out of this. And what we see is here's the user ID for determining the current user and the user ID is one. That is the user ID that is now used and assumed is the user value. Now we can show, I can show you, if we wanna set this to value 99, I'm gonna run again. Let's go ahead and skip. We're gonna run through this. And now what's our user ID value? 99. We'll go ahead and jump over these. We'll jump over the next one. Let's jump out. And determine current user is 99. The value is whatever we set this parameter to and all of the authentication checks are bypassed. Now that I've shown you what this authentication bypass vulnerability is, and how it works, I'm gonna show you what you can do to prevent not only this authentication bypass, but all authentication bypasses on WordPress websites. First, you're gonna use an RASP, that's Runtime Application Self-Protection Firewall, like Bitfire. Next, you're gonna to go to the RASP settings on that firewall. You're gonna enable user authentication checks. What this does is it monitors the WordPress authentication system and it requires that one of the authentication methods passes, either cookie-based authentication or application password-based authentication, which are both included by default in WordPress are the only two forms of authentication allowed. If a plugin tries to override that, as the WooCommerce plugin does by changing the currently, use, the currently used user ID to another value, it will be specifically blocked. And I'll show you exactly what that looks like. Here we have the exact same request we used this last time that when we debugged our code, and we're gonna go ahead and send the request. And our response is now 403 forbidden, and we can go ahead and look at it. It says the request was blocked by Bitfire. Something happened, a plugin switched the logged in user ID, request block to protect WordPress. Uh, and if we go ahead and disable this functionality, and we look here at our body, we have a new user ID, hacked three, which if we go back to our user list, is not currently in our WordPress site. If we go back to this system, the Postman, and we repost this request with now with the authentication check turned off and we post, we can see we have the new user account was created, hacked three. And we go back to look at our user list and we have two new user accounts. One is hacked three. Uh, if you have any questions about how this vulnerability works or specifics about how the RASP authentication system works, inside the Bitfire firewall, go ahead and drop a comment down below. I'd be happy to reply to you and let you know anything that you might have uh, be curious about. Thanks so much for your time. See you on the next one.